Hey everyone, in this video, I want to dive into the model router capability that is available in Microsoft Foundry. If I think about it today, there are a vast number of different types of generative language models available, both large and small. So I can think about, okay, we have this huge array of different types of models. Remember, a model fundamentally is all about these parameters, these weights and biases over all their different neurons that enable it to create a probability distribution of based on what it's given in, what should the next token be, and the next one, and the next one, et cetera, et cetera. So when I think about the model and what it's doing, there's specific aspects to it. There's pros and there's cons, there's relative strengths to all the different models that are available. Now, one of these is obviously around the idea of cost. When I think about the cost of the tokens going in and the tokens coming out, the response is the inferencing that it's doing. So we pay a certain amount per token. And there may also be the idea of these reasoning tokens for the more advanced models where it's, it's doing a chain of thought behind the scenes to be able to handle far more complicated types of requirements. But also there's the idea of the speed. How long does it take to actually perform that inferencing for very much chat type interactions? Well, I may want it to respond very quickly, very interactively. Maybe it's even doing a multimodal type capability where its speech is coming out. Or maybe I'm then sending it to another model to then speak it. Then we also have to think about the accuracy. Is it actually producing the correct output based on my expectation? Is it giving the, the full explanation? Is it thinking through the detail? Is it including all of the data? Is it grounding correctly? So we have these really three key dimensions when I think about what is the right model? Is it doing the optimal job around how much I'm paying, how quickly it's responding, and then how accurate is what it's output in to what should be the intended purpose. And then when I think about that, there is not one perfect model. Otherwise, there'd be very short discussion. I can think about that we have a certain input. So I might say, okay, when I think about the prompt, there are many dimensions when I think about it. So I might want to use a very large model to respond in the best way if it is a more complex prompt. So I consider the complexity of what I'm asking it to do. Hey, consider these different scenarios. Um, I want you to plan out and contrast and give explanations, et cetera, et cetera it may be it's having to handle a significant amount of data. And also I might think about, well, is it interacting with different types of tooling? So what tools does it have to use? So there's a number of different aspects to what we're being asked to do. So for where I'm using a lot of data, lots of different tools, it's fairly complex, then I'm gonna want a larger model if it's more sophisticated. But if it's a very simple type request, well, then I want to use a smaller model because a smaller model will not only be cheaper, but it's going to respond faster, which is going to be really important, especially in those chats now where I've got a customer waiting, they've typed something in. I don't necessarily want them to have to sit there waiting for 20 seconds to get a response. And if I did use a larger model, it's just going to cost me more. It's going to take longer, but it would be no higher of a quality output. Now, as an application developer, I can write my AI application, I can write my agent, and I could deploy multiple models. I could deploy a number of large language models, some small language models, some that may be really good at coding. And then I would try and ascertain, okay, based on the action I'm currently trying to perform, which one should I send it to? But there's a lot of complexity to that. And that's really where possible, we want a model router to solve this. And so Microsoft Foundry 
has the concept of a model router. And what this does is it's providing those things we just talked about. Now it's gonna give me a single endpoint. So there is an endpoint that you as the application developer, the agent developer, will send your prompt to. And then what it's gonna do is it is gonna perform that analysis. So it's gonna analyze what is it being asked to do? How complex does this seem to be? How much data is it gonna involve? How many toolings does it have to go and hook into? And then based on that, it will then pick what is the optimal model that it should use to get that right balance of cost and speed and accuracy. So it's gonna give your AI application overall the optimal AI experience. I'm not wasting money always using a very large model where it's not required, nor incurring the speed penalty where it's given me no benefit. So, and then, so if it's a simple question, hey, it can use a smaller model, I get a quicker response. Now, this analysis piece is performed by a separate language model. So it's using AI to work this out, but it was trained specifically to make that intelligent decision, and it does it in milliseconds. So if you think about the overall impact on the performance of your app, it's gonna be negligible. And again, think about it that, okay, maybe it adds a couple of milliseconds to do this, but then if it can go and pick the most optimal model in terms of the speed as well, overall that interaction will be less. Now, when I talked about this picking logic, um, you can actually tweak this. There's the idea of a balanced mode, a cost mode, and a quality mode. If you think about it, it's doing a certain set of logic. In fact, we can jump over and look at this quickly. So what I'm looking at now is a deployment I've done, but you can see I have this option of a routing mode. And I have this balanced quality and cost as we just talked about. So the whole point of this is if you think about it pretty logically, that balanced, hey, it's deciding which one it should use. And within one or 2% of the quality, I am not gonna lose too much quality, too much accuracy. It'll pick the most effective model. So as long as it's within one or 2%, then sure, I'll pick the most cost effective within a fairly narrow window. With cost, well now maybe my tolerance is a little bit larger. I'll take a bigger potential hit on the quality, the accuracy, to pick a more cost effective model. So I'll give myself a little bit more flexibility. Whereas if I pick quality, it's always gonna pick whatever model will give the highest quality output, regardless of price. Even if it was like 0.3% better quality and it costs whatever more, it wouldn't care. It will pick the model that gives me the highest possible quality. Now, another nice benefit of when I deploy this model router is in terms of what I am actually deploying. So my deployment of, in terms of, a model resource is exactly, I'm deploying the model router. I don't have to deploy all of the various other models that it may then go and use, except for the Claude models. The Claude models that you have to go and deploy their own deployment to, and then it can use it. But outside of that, all I deploy is the model router, and then it has its own serverless instances of all of the various models it can use. And again, this standard little single endpoint, it supports the Azure OpenAI chat completions API. I think there's a few other things as well. And when I do this deployment, today there's two different types. I can do the global standard, which means I, as the app developer, don't have any uh, data residency issues. I'm gonna let it just pick whichever cluster anywhere in the world that will result in, hey, it's got the capacity, it's got the scale, it's gonna give me actually, forget about the network latency, normally the inferencing latency is significantly more than network latency, and so maybe it go and pick a model that's further away, but has less work going on, so overall the inferencing will be quicker, so we can pick anywhere in the world. Or, 
I can deploy it to data zone. And what data zone says is you pick, I can pick the US data zone or I can pick the EU data zone. So then it will only pick uh, infants in clusters within either the US or the EU, depending on which ones you pick. And again, the models it's actually going to use are all serverless. So I don't have to worry on the back end of hey, what capacity do I have, what's going on. Again, except for the claw models, it's all just happening for me. Now, the actual models on the back end that it can go and hook into, I mean, they are going to vary over time. Um, today, for example, there's a whole bunch of open AI. So there's sort of the GPT-4, there's uh, 5, there's also the DeepSeek. There's also Llama, Grok, if you've signed up for Grok. So I think today there's a sign up to do. And again, if I've deployed the Claude models, then I can use those as well. So there's all these various models available that you can use. And you can see these. So if we jump over again, super quick, if I cancel this out, let me just go to our models and we'll deploy it. I'm just going to search for model router. There you go, model router. Now, the exact models, again, are going to vary over time based on the model router version. But if I could look at the latest one, then I can see, well, it's GPT-5, GPT-5 Mini, GPT-5 Nano, GPT-5 Chat, GPT-4.1, GPT-4.1 Mini, GPT-4.1 Nano, GPT-4.0, 4.0 Mini, uh, O4 Mini, Grok 4, Grok 4, um, Fast Reasoning, Deep Seek, GPT OSS, Llama 4, Claude. So you have all these different models that could potentially be used. And again, they, they're going to vary depending on that specific router version. And also, if I just jump back to my particular instance that I've got deployed. One of the things you can actually do is you can control it. So I'm using a, a particular um, version. There are different versions. I'm going to have it to automatically upgrade. But even within that configuration, I could change it to instead of being all of the possible models, so route to a subset of the models, and then I can pick specifically which ones I actually want to go ahead and use based on my particular environment. So you have a lot of flexibility in exactly what it will use for your environment. And again, you can opt in to auto update your model router. So the whole point of all of this is what's going to happen now is my application, it is going to send in the prompt to this single endpoint. Its language model will analyze it, pick the most optimal AI model. Again, you can help sway how maybe it prioritizes certain factors over others. And then, hey, it's just going to go and use whichever one makes the most sense for that particular prompt. And then obviously, I'm paying for the cost per token of the model that's picked. And then the accuracy and the speed is going to completely depend on what that model actually was. And so it's super, super easy to actually use this. If we jump back over for a second. So you already saw earlier on as I was deploying the thing. So this is my deployment of it. But if I go into the, I guess just the details quickly, we just look at all the different things. And I think we went through all of these. So I've got a global standard. And we have the different router versions. I've got all of the different models. You have a certain amount of tokens. I can still customize the guardrails for sort of the jailbreak detection the different types of safety I may want on both the prompt and the tooling. So all of those things are still there and applicable. I can monitor, I can run evaluations against it. In the playground as normal, I can still change things like the temperature, uh, the top P, all of those different aspects to it. This is the playground. So I could add different instructions, I could add knowledge, I could add different memory aspects to it. 
But just to kind of try and, I guess, showcase how this thing is actually going to work, we could try a few different prompts. So my first prompt is going to be really, really simple. So what port does HTTPS use by default? So it's going to run it through the model router. And notice it's pretty quick. And it's showing me the model it used. GPT-5 chat, 2025-87. And I can see the amount of tokens it used. So 30 input and 69 output. OK, that was a very simple thing. So it used what it considered the most optimal model. Let's ask it a more complicated question. So explain the difference between orchestration and choreography in event-driven architectures. Use Azure examples, include a diagram, description, highlight common mistakes architects make. So this is a much more complicated request. And you'll notice I'm not seeing any responses yet. Because what it's going to have done behind the scenes now, it's going to have picked a more complicated, a larger model. And also because of that, it's probably doing reasoning. So it's doing its own internal chain of thought. So that will take even longer before I start to actually get a response to it. So it's a much more comprehensive response. There's a lot more. This time it picked GPT-5 Nano. So it's still trying to do a certain amount of optimization. There's a lot more tokens being used because it's obviously a much larger output. So it has tweaked again which model to use. If I then try saying, Super simple. Let's convert this to uppercase Microsoft Foundry. Well, this time it's it's done. It did a good job. And this time it uses the GPT OSS 120 billion parameter model. So it's even faster and again helping me save money. So you can see it's using different models based on what it's being asked to do, the complexity of what it's being asked to do. The amount of data didn't really shift in my examples, but you can see it's doing that analysis. I had balance picked. And so it, it's really within a couple of percent, it'll pick the cheapest model that gets me within a couple of percent of the accuracy that I've been asking for. That, that's the whole point. Um, and that's really it. I mean, I hope this makes sense. What it is doing is providing you as the AI developer the removal of all of that complexity. I'm not having to now think about managing lots of different model deployments, think about, well, how would I tell which model to use or just using the highest common denominator and impacting the performance I get when it's not needed, impacting my cost significantly. I just get a single endpoint. It's going to go ahead and do that hard work for me. So as always, thank you for watching. I hope this was useful. Till next video, take care.